Chandrika Prasad Srivastava was born in 1920 into a landowning family in northern India. The tragic death of his parents at an early age forged a strength of character, depth and determination that he was to reveal in abundance. He met and married Nirmala Selve in 1947. Her parents had been deeply involved in the struggle for Indian independence and Nirmala herself was a political activist. As a child, she had spent time living at Mahatma Gandhi's ashram. With their marriage, C.P. Srivastava and Nirmala began a dedicated partnership with a lifelong admiration and respect for each other's convictions and work. So C.P. chose a career which allowed him to remain in India. He joined the Indian Administrative Service, thus beginning his distinguished career. In 1961, he was appointed managing director of a public sector company, the fledgling Shipping Corporation of India. The Prime Minister was immediately impressed by this tall, articulate young officer who came with such a formidable reputation for integrity and capability. The period that I spent with him was probably the most elevating period of my life. And uh, I was with him the very last day of his life, when he died in Tashkent. In 1974, he was elected Secretary General of the United Nations International Maritime Organization, based in London. He was unanimously re-elected for a further three terms, serving a total of 16 years. In 1989, he announced his retirement, which was received with great regret by the United Nations. Worldwide, he has received 31 of the highest honours and awards in recognition for his tireless service and outstanding attributes. He was also the founding Chancellor Emeritus of the World Maritime University, conceived and established by him in 1983 under the auspices of the International Maritime Organization, thus ensuring that all developing countries were able to participate actively in the work of the IMO, which until then had relied largely on the expertise of developed maritime states. Despite being honoured by royalty, Sir C.P. remains an extremely humble, gentle man. In July 1990, the Queen of England gave him one of her country's highest awards, Knight Commander of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George, making him the first Indian to be knighted since independence. Sir C. P. Srivastava has published several books, including Lal Bahadur Shastri, A Life of Truth in Politics, and provides an inspirational model of an ideal politician. The book was launched in Sydney in 1995. And I find that people here have a, a feeling for people of India and people for developing countries. They understand their problems. So I said, if we step out of India, where else? Let's go to Australia and begin there where the people are absolutely wonderful and full of understanding. While your text salutes a great Prime Minister, you can take great pride in your own role, your personal contribution to these great achievements. The book, ladies and gentlemen, is now officially launched. In November 2005, Sir C.P. was awarded the sixth Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award for Excellence in Public Administration, Academies and Management, which was presented to him by the President of India in a special ceremony. On this momentous occasion, when the Dal Bahadur Shastri National Award has been conferred upon me before this distinguished assembly by the President of India himself, who, like Shastriji, is a visionary and globally renowned for his ethics, integrity and righteousness, I bow down to him in deep reverence and with feelings of abiding gratitude. For me, sir, this will be the most memorable moment 
of my entire public service career in my life. Throughout his career, Sisipi's ability to draw differing parties to the same table and through persuasion, diplomacy and negotiation to reach agreement has gained for him lifelong respect and admiration. Before concluding, I seek your permission to acknowledge the enormous debt of gratitude which I owe to my wife Nirmala who is here, without whose mighty support all these 58 years that we have been married and without the loving care of our daughters Kalpana and Sadhana who both are here, I could not have been standing before you today. I am now 85 years old and whatever still remains of my life is being devoted to working with Nirmala who has over the preceding 35 years worked ceaselessly for the creation of a new society based on the essential unity of all religions and who upholds the same ethical and moral values that Sri Shastriji steadfastly stood for. While mixing in the most powerful diplomatic circles, he always supported her work to transform human beings using Sahaja Yoga techniques. Now, in his retirement, he has continued to travel the world with her, promoting and encouraging the advancement of this great movement which connects people to their own inner spiritual energy and gives them the ability to transform themselves regardless of creed, culture, race or religion. A glance at Sir C.P.'s life reveals a portrait of a living legend. Over his many years he has worked tirelessly alongside Sri Mataji in his own area of diplomacy to transform humanity and bring freedom, hope and enlightenment to the world. If I had lived all these 85 years only to see this scene, I would have regarded my life as fulfilled. Your Australian Saj Yoga Samaj welcomes you and is doubly honoured by the opportunity to share your birthday with you.
and I won't tell you when we arrived here, we didn't expect to see what we saw. We saw this place and couldn't recognize it. It was all changed, altered to create heaven on earth for her. She is uh, divine, absolutely. There's no words to describe this. I want to tell you that I've been in many functions with her, with her Mataji, but probably this will be the most memorable evening of our lives. And uh, what a joy it is. This is the kind of world we want, not the world that we hear about in television, but this is a beautiful world. How I wish this scene could be seen by millions on earth and have become sad yogis tomorrow. I bow down to her as you do and thank her for having come to this earth to create a new heaven, to create new angels. And I tell you, I stay from this heart, you are the angels of the sixth angel. And I want to say what lies in my heart. But first I must tell you, this lady who is sitting here, my wife, for 35 years, she has been running around the world trying to convey a message, a message of love, of togetherness. If we are children of the same almighty power, why can't we live together? Why must we talk of our differences? Why can't we talk, let's like see this, of our togetherness? And it's not an impossible dream. It is something which is achievable. But the world needs this message, the her message. So my appeal to you is this. She has done her job. She has for 35 years been running around. She has done her job, created Sahaja Yoga in 80, 90 countries. And she has created beautiful things. Only way for the people of the world to come together is to come together on the basis of her philosophy, which is again based on ancient Indian philosophy. One almighty, one human family, all together, regardless of their color of skin, regardless of their language, they all come together. Now, if this is the message which you accept, then it must be propagated.
Die von Bar. I want also to invite your attention to the fact that this time we are celebrating 25 years of Sahaja Yoga in Australia. And uh, what a wonderful occasion that is. It will be evident from the fact when I tell you that only about uh, six weeks ago or eight weeks ago, the Sahaja Yogi and the Yogis of Australia invited us to be here for this 25th anniversary and their Holy Mother accepted. And once she accepted then they got busy trying to find a place for her stay. And please believe me ladies and gentlemen, in six weeks time they have transformed this house from what it was into the heaven that you see here today.
auspicious occasion of the 59th wedding anniversary of Sri Mataji and Sir CP. We're truly, we feel truly honoured to be able to celebrate the occasion here in our ashram, their home at 10 Clarence Street in Sydney, Australia. It was here 25 years ago, we celebrated a very similar occasion in this room on the 21st of March, 19, 1981. We actually celebrated Sri Mataji's birthday. I think we were also celebrating Sir CP's birthday. And I think we were probably also, though memory 
eludes me a little bit here, also celebrating uh, their wedding anniversary, which was to happen a few days later. So it's just magnificent that 25 years later we're able to repeat our celebration of a wonderful married life together. We know full well from everything Sri Mataji has said what emphasis she plays, plays on the centrality in human affairs of the family, the married life, the two wheels of the chariot of the husband and wife, the left and right side working together. If one wheel falls off, the chariot is no longer functioning. And no better example nor demonstration of the importance of this and the magnificence of, of it, of, this, of the institution of marriage than their own. We're truly blessed to see both Sri Mataji and Sir CP looking so well and we express our profoundest thanks to them that they have privileged us by coming here so far to Australia and we have celebrated so many wonderful occasions with them. Regrettably, this may be one of the last on this occasion that we celebrate, but by no means the least. Such a significant occasion is a wedding anniversary and the 59th is, in, is indeed uh, auspicious and wonderful. And we thank them again. I thank them on behalf of everybody in the Australian Collective uh, for having been so generous with their time and for having come to Australia uh, so that we may, we may enjoy uh, the wonderful example that they set for us and benefit from that. Mataji and Sir CP, your Sahaja Yoga children of the world, wish you a happy 59th wedding anniversary. May you have many, many more. Since we have come, every moment, every day has been absolutely wonderful and glorious. I can go on and on on this, but I want to tell you something a little more. And it is that I am deeply grateful to Australia and Australian Sahaja. So this was something in my heart and I wanted to mention that. We have had wonderful uh, programs, we have wonderful food from the kitchen. Everything has been perfect. I don't know that there could be anything better than what we have experienced. So, I must conclude now, but I conclude by expressing on behalf of your mother her love for you and her uh, warm appreciation. And I'm sure she is extremely happy that her children have done so beautifully here. I carry with me wonderful memories, carry them always. And I told another gathering, you have asked for trouble and trouble will come, we will come back.